welcome and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I have a heartbreaking story to share with you out of Brooklyn, New York, that took place on April 5th of 2021. It's a story about a little girl who celebrated her ninth birthday at a party at her home and ended it completely terrified in a closet on the phone with 911. Police said her 911 call was absolutely heartbreaking to listen to, as she told them that her daddy came to her birthday party, but he didn't bring any presents. What he did bring, though, was guns, and more than enough ammunition to shoot and kill the birthday girl's mother and two older sisters. According to an NYPD detective investigating the case, the little girl's 911 call came in around 11.22 p.m., and she told police her father shot people. When police arrived on the scene, they found three women shot dead in the little girl's apartment. Her mother, 45-year-old Rashida Barzi, and her two older half-sisters, 20-year-old Soleil Spears and 16-year-old Chloe Spears, along with finding the terrified little girl hiding in a closet. Police say they believe she was spared because she was the biological daughter of the shooter, who police say they found outside of the apartment complex on a walkway, dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. They said they also found two guns near his dead body. Upon initial investigation, police said Rashida Barzi and her killer had been involved in an on-again, off-again relationship for about 20 years, and they were told it had been very rocky lately. A witness informed police that the shooter, 46-year-old Joseph McCrimmon, had gone to the party in a very agitated state, as he had been involved in a domestic dispute with Barzi, but that there were no previous records of domestic disputes or 911 calls from the couple. The NYPD commissioner said that viewing the officer's body camera of the little girl found in the closet that night would just tear your heart out. And according to police, this is not McCrimmon's first violent crime. He has a history of violent crimes. In 1995, he was convicted of manslaughter for killing a sanitation worker who broke up a fight but he only served eight years in prison for it. Then he was involved in a bank robbery in 2013, and he was only sentenced to five years in prison for that. So, if my math is correct, it is the year 2021. McCrimmon and the little girl's mother have been involved in a relationship for 20 years, which means they started dating back in 2001. But, in 2001... He was still serving his eight years for committing murder in 1995, correct? So she met him while he was in prison for murder, or was still fresh out of the pen if he was released early, for murder. Then their little girl is nine. She just had a birthday that he destroyed by killing her family on April 5th, which means she was born in... 2012? Then he robbed a bank a year later in 2013 and went back to prison for five more years. Sounds like a great guy. He already missed five of the first years of his daughter's life. Then he took away all the family she had for the rest of her life. Oh man, I feel a lecture coming on. And I'm channeling AFC Podcast. Do I really need to do this? Does it really need to be said yet again? Stop dating thugs and losers. You can do better than that every day of the week and twice on Sundays. When you date thugs, you date death. Period. Game over. And once you seal your and your family's fate... There are no second chances, no do-overs. And you could say maybe she thought he was a changed man after his murder. Maybe he fed her some bullshit about how he murdered him in self-defense or whatever. 
But let me tell you something, and you can file this away with all the other useless information I provide you on my channel. But this is probably the most important piece. Once you've seen something, you can't unsee it. And once you've done something, you can't undo it. Once you commit a murder, it's not such a far stretch to commit another. Especially if you only got slapped on the wrist for it and served eight years or less in prison. That's nothing for taking someone's life. Once you go that far, you can't go back. I don't care what anyone says. You can choose to never commit another, but been there, done that. It's not such a far reach in the mind anymore. Why take a chance like that? Why put yourself and your innocent children in a situation like that? Especially if the situation is such that murder was a solution to a problem with somebody, which his situation may very well have been. According to an article in the New York Times, the sanitation worker he killed, 28-year-old Eugene Grant, Jr., was a father of five, and he shot him in the back on Halloween after he broke up a fight involving Grant's nephew. And he claimed his gun went off when it fell out of his pocket after Grant tried to take it from him. Question. If Grant was going for the gun in McCrimmon's pocket, and it fell to the ground and accidentally went off? How did Grant manage to get shot in the back? Never mind. Anyway, the article also states that McCrimmon did a third stint in prison because just three years after he was released for the murder, he was reincarcerated for an unspecified charge. And the article said that during his sentencing for the bank robbery, federal prosecutors noted that he did not accept responsibility for either the robbery or the killing, and said that he was an unlikely candidate for rehabilitation. So, we have manslaughter, an unspecified charge, and bank robbery already on the table. Three incarcerations. The prison system recognizes that he is an unlikely candidate for rehabilitation, and he is re-released out into the public anyway. So, for his piece de resistance, since nobody seemed to be paying attention to what he was quite loudly screaming to the world already, he guns down his little nine-year-old daughter's mother and sisters on her birthday and leaves her in the apartment with their dead bodies, hiding in a closet and calling 911 while he goes outside and takes away the only father she ever knew. Which is fine, because he was a piece of shit anyway. But he had zero care for what he was doing and did to his own flesh and blood. Just like he had zero care for his own life or the lives of others. He gave her a living nightmare for a birthday present that she will carry with her for the rest of her life. It was 11.30 at night. That precious little girl should have been in bed, dreaming of all her new gifts and all the fun she had at her party. But instead, she was woken up by gunshots. She was no doubt terrified for her own life and was found on her sister's bloody cell phone, calling for help as her family lay dying just feet away. A neighbor who was in the apartment below at the time of the murders told police she heard no arguing before the gunshots. Just multiple shots, then wailing, then three more shots, and dead silence. And the little girl's family was gone. No do-over now. No take-backs now. What's done is done. She can't unsee what she's seen. And where will she end up now? The reports I read said the police haven't said if she's safe in police custody or if she was placed with CPS. Hopefully she has loving family members who can take her 
and do whatever they possibly can to help her deal with the trauma that she just experienced. But what if she doesn't? She'll get placed with a foster family? Imagine waking up in the morning excited about your birthday party. And by the very next morning, you're traumatized for life. Your family's gone, and you are being placed with a whole new family. Just like that. That precious baby girl is in hell at the tender age of nine years old. Since I read about this story, and that she told the 911 dispatcher that her piece of shit father didn't bring her any birthday gifts, my heart has been broken. Because despite everything her mind was trying to process during that hell, it still tried to protect her by keeping her party and her presence in the forefront, just like a nine-year-old should be thinking on her birthday. She was trying to focus on something she could handle, like her father not bringing her gifts, not on the horrific sounds she heard and the carnage that she saw. Police said when they found her, she was clutching the bloody cell phone and a stuffed animal. Her lifeline and her comfort. Not that it would even scratch the surface to help this child, but every fiber of my being wants to call the NYPD and find out how I can get gifts to her. Then I want to buy her every single thing her heart has ever desired. It won't bring her family back, I know, but I want to give her everything now that he's taken it all away. Maybe it will give her a reprieve from her hell for just a few moments, and maybe it'll help repair my heart. I think I will. I need that. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you on my next video.